good to be together this morning on the Lord's Day. I wanted to begin our meetings from Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 5 and 6. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to begin with God this morning. Now the God of patience and consolation. This is a description of God. It tells us of his nature and shows us some of his characteristics who he is and what he's like. When the scriptures say the God of any particular characteristic, one thing that it's doing is bringing our attention to his dominion, what he is over. And ultimately we know that God is God of all. He's God of heaven and God of earth. He's over all, but I think it's beneficial for us at times to look at these details that the scriptures show. He's the God of patience and consolation in particular. Other details are given us in scripture like these. He is the God of all grace. He's the God of truth and the God of knowledge. He's the God of recompenses and of all comfort. So the phrase the God of can also indicate what he has power to give. We know that these are things that have to do with his nature and his person. But they're also alluding to things that he wants to give to his people. When believing hearts understand more of who God is and what he has, then our appetite is whet for those characteristics that we see in him. We have need of every one of them. You notice the, the things that I've read so far. We have need of patience. We have need of consolation and grace and truth and knowledge. So all of these things are appealing to our new man, the new nature that he has created within us. Here are a few more. He's the God of glory, the God of hope, the God of peace, and the God of love. So here we're reminded in particular in our verse this morning that he is the God of patience. This is why we were not consumed, brethren, because he is a God of patience. This is why we've been led to repentance. He is long-suffering. He is patient. But he's also the God of consolation. He takes away sorrow and grief and the effects of trouble that we may be experiencing. He comforts his children. You remember he sent Jesus so that he could be the one who succors his children in all of their afflictions. He's the God of consolation. So with that, we consider this God. This is the one who is doing the work that we read of in this scripture, that he may grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Jesus Christ. Amen. The new creature that God has given us comes with a new mind. Amen. It is the mind of Christ, and each one of his children have it. This is one of the things that we as believers share together as a result of being begotten of God, the same mind. Now there are times in scriptures where we're exhorted individually to take thought for our mind. Speaking of the mind of Christ, it says, let this mind also dwell in you. Or it says, gird up the loins of your mind. This is individually what we do with our mind. But here in this verse, we are focusing on a body or a group. So the mind that dwells in us together as a corporate idea. He's granting us to be like-minded one toward another. So here we are to be mindful of our mindset in regard to Christ and those who follow him, those whom he has chosen. Remember, God is the one who is granting us to be like-minded. But we also remember that we will have a part to do in keeping the unity in our minds as we labor together with the saints. Now we also see that Jesus is the standard. We are granted to be like-minded one toward another according, according to Christ Jesus. We are made like-minded toward one another in the same regard that we are like Christ himself, like him in his mind. We've been given his mind, and as we let his mind dwell in us, he is able to join us to the others who are also minding the same things. 
Now, it's been said here before when we've talked about being of one mind that this doesn't mean we're going to have the exact same thoughts, that we're not going to have the exact same outlook on a particular circumstance. We're not robots, but we are creations, individuals that make up the whole image of Christ. Uh -huh. So we will all have God and his kingdom in the foremost parts of our mind. We will all reason according to the purpose and the will of God as we can see it and we can understand it. This is the way that we are like-minded one toward another. And we have experienced this. There is a great joy that comes with being like-minded with the saints. There is a comfort that we experience as a result of this. It's very confirming to us that we see the same mind in our brethren that we're traveling with. And there's a safety to it as well. There's a safety to being like-minded with the saints. We can be more productive and labor more effectively together as we're like-minded. And we do give thanks for all of these benefits, these benefits that come along with being like-minded. But here in our text, we see that that's not the extent for which the Lord is granting us to be like-minded. It is that we may with one mind and one mouth glorify him. Amen. That is the purpose. Amen. It is not fitting for the testimony of our God in the mouth of his people to be disharmonious. It will glorify God when our testimony agrees together in one with all those who claim his name. As the children of God speak, this like-mindedness is shown similarly to the wall building in Nehemiah's day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Each one had a specific part, but each is being used to build one whole strong structure. So in this case, each individual part agrees and supports the other so that a complete testimony for the Lord is built through his people. Amen. One mind, one mouth, and one purpose. So God has given us the mind of Christ. He is the one that's granting us to be like-minded with one another, mm -hmm. and it is to the end that he would receive much glory and honor, that he would be made known in the earth. So just like we have begun with God, we are also concluding with God. Yeah. The glory will go back yes. to God himself for the work that he has accomplished in us. I thought that these things were fitting for our meeting together this morning because we do come together to glorify the Lord. And he is the one that is going to grant us to be like-minded one toward another, Amen. according to his son. So we'll open with a word of prayer and commit Brother Aaron to the Lord as he teaches the class this morning. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for this time that you've given us to spend with the saints, to come before you, Lord, to minister to one another and minister to you. We pray that you would bless us, that we would be like-minded today as we consider the scriptures and the things that are taught that we would be able to understand, that we would be able to help one another as we discuss these things to increase in our understanding of the truth, and that we would with one mind and one mouth glorify you and exalt your son. We pray that you would be with Brother Aaron as he comes to lead us in this class teaching and discussion, that you would bless his heart and his thoughts and his words, that we would have good fellowship together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.